if you have a need for something, get it. However, the thing is, is that you have to consider if, if you want it, you just want it. You don't have to have a justification for once, but let's also not complain when those wants have compound interest of complications and understanding workflow, which means the work has to actually have a flow. It passes through from one side of a something to another side, literally from confusion to clarity. What is up entrepreneurs? Welcome back to the video simplified podcast with your hostess, the mostest Diana Gladney. This week, I want to talk to you about overbuying gear and underproducing. Now to specifically clarify, I am not talking about any one specific person. This is not coming from any one specific scenario. This is, and has been a consistent thing when I am going through working with individuals, when I'm going through and doing live streams. And I saw a crap ton of this in 2020 when everything literally just stopped being available because of not, it wasn't like a global chip shortage. It just was like a global shortage. And we all know because of the Panini press of 2020, okay, was out here having people literally take hundred dollar capture cards was the Elgato cam link charging $350, $500, $1,000 for it because people literally needed it. And so we also saw a surplus of random brands as I always like to call them just random brands as a umbrella of like the $20 capture card or the can't link as it's commonly known on YouTube that basically was just, again, it does the basic function. These were running from anywhere from 50 to 15 to $30. It did the job. And so that's what most people needed because they literally had nothing, couldn't use anything, cameras, everything's lights, everything was overpriced. And if something was in stock, then it was just good luck, Chuck. Okay. So because of that, and knowing that we're going through a global chip shortage, we're looking at different things happening in the market, it, market positive and negatively, positively and negatively in the real estate industry, in online, the online ad space, in hell, the content creation space, everything gets impacted when stuff and major shifts are happening in the world from political seasons to legit technological issues. Um, issues that we may be having with different countries or communications or whatever. So we as creators and entrepreneurs honestly get the butt of the stick at times when it comes to that stuff. The one thing that I will forever teach forever and a day teach you is that you never just want to buy individual spot things, individual pieces of gear. You want to actually go through and look at the overall system of gear that you need, because if you don't, you will always find yourself buying something unnecessarily having extras. And I'm a big proponent of getting what you need or want, because it's fine if you just want something. And I also ran into the issue where a lot of people will want something but it's like, if I'm talking to them, they'll be convincing me of the why they need it, knowing they've heard me preach the gospel of this whole thing, right? If you really want something, get it. If you have a need for something, get it. However, the thing is, is that you have to consider if, if you want it, you just want it. You don't have to have a justification for once. But let's also not complain when those wants have compound interest of complications in understanding workflow, which means the work has to actually have a flow. It passes through from one side of a something to another side, literally from confusion to clarity. So when we're looking at gear and the essence of overbuying, um, and this was really something I was inspired by, uh, from another creator. And I saw them doing content around things that, that were mistakes of theirs. And I was like, I would love to do 
some videos around and it's something I haven't haven't made on the channel. It is now and we're producing these videos, but it's like I would love to do a video around mistakes that I've made. I'd love to do a video around purchases that were mistakes. And it resonated really well with everyone on the channel. If you haven't checked those videos out, I'll link a couple of them down in the description down below. And I'm doing even more short form content around that mistakes. And if you're, you're in the industry, whatever industry, obviously you're in a industry, but whatever your niche is, you can make the same thing. Five mistakes you need to know about X or five mistakes that new people make or whoever is see, it could be seasoned established people make when you talk about X, right? And so um, even like today I had a comment that I did another piece of content on again, like attracts like, so every content can birth another piece of content as you're learning to create content. That's something that you need to understand. And so it's never any hiccups when it comes to content ideas. Um, I've talked about that in previous episodes. The biggest problem people have is capturing ideas so that you have the thought to execute on later. So when you're thinking about what gear you need, I want you to start processing and thinking in your mind, what am I trying to accomplish first and foremost? And then I want you to start thinking about what are the pieces of the puzzle to make that happen? I always talk about it in a logic chain format, again, from point A to point B. And what are those points that I need to plot? Same thing like a GPS. I, I'm old enough and young enough <laughs> to remember the days of MapQuest. Don't know if that company's still around. I doubt that they're out of business, but they could be, okay? Because you got all kinds of uh, apps that came out around GPS and then just native ones like Google um, Maps and then you have Apple Maps or whatever. And I think most people use a combination of those with maybe something else that they trust. So you don't need specifically that. But I remember in the days of MapQuest, okay, you were planning a trip. I remember even before then, because I get a lot of uh, Gen X experiences from having Gen X siblings, right? So I'm a millennial, but I'm also the youngest of six. So I, I know about Goonies. I know about the letter people. I know about, you know, a bunch of stuff that like, I know about the, the old McDonald's. I know about you know, the Ponderosas and the Shonies and all, you know, all this, all the things that like you see on TikTok and like Gen Xers remember when, you know, it's like, yeah, I was there. Cause I had to come with you. you know, right. <laughs> so knowing that like in my mind, I'm old enough to remember when I lost my train of thought. Oh, the Gen X stuff got me. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Oh, I got to bring it back now. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not taking this out. So I'm trying to remember because I, tag on that, I had a good point. And if you were listening to this, you're like, but you, I, you just remember like, yeah, I lost it in real time. I have to come back around to it. Holy spirit, help bring it back to my remembrance. Okay. Amen. <laughs> and so the thing is, is though, um, being a millennial, essentially, I'm old enough to have gotten experiences from other generations enough to remember certain things, the MapQuest, that's what it was. Remember that MapQuest was a thing. And even before MapQuest, the map book, we had the physical map book where you had an atlas or you had a certain region or whatever, like literally traveling using a physical map book, the legit thing, longitude, latitude. And then we transitioned to MapQuest. We thought that was the biggest, the best thing since sliced bread is the Bees Knees Hall of Fame. You start at your house, you start at whatever, add in your different plots, print it out. Okay. And you had to be ready for the page flip. Amen. Okay. You had to be ready to go from, is it, okay, is this still part of making notes and stuff like that? Because once you left home, you didn't have the notes. Like you had to make your notes on the paper and you staple it together. Have turn on the light. Don't distract the driver, but turn on your light. Like you didn't have internet on your phone. And even then phones weren't like we were, what was in 2G, maybe high end phones or something. Maybe with just having 3G. Maybe I don't even, I don't even remember 3G being a thing for a while. So maybe like 2G. So just the fact having internet would be amazing. So the thing is now we had all that technology. Fantastic. So the transition of gear and equipment and stuff like that, again, think about 
your map quest. What's your point A? What's your point B? What's something to watch out for? And blah, blah, blah. When you're talking about your gear and your equipment that you're buying, that you're using, that you're going to need, where am I trying to go? When you're going through and creating your content, I'm trying to get to this specific end result goal. This is my goal. What's the steps in the in-between? What's step one? What's step two? You may not know all of the things to watch for, but you can just do your best to at least say, I want to do a podcast. I want to do a video podcast. I want to do a live stream. Those are all the same pieces of a puzzle. I need a camera source. I need a microphone source. And as I've been writing in my book, uh, which I still have not put the finishing touches on yet, um, I teach you the Alvis method. A L a first part of that is A L V audio lighting and then the video. So the first part is the audio. Then it's the lighting. Then it's the video. A L V audio lighting and then the video. So the camera source is last audio needs to be great. Cause even if I was using a webcam right now, Nobody's mad about it. Yeah, you maybe listen to the audio version, but if you're on the, uh, the YouTube channel for the, the podcast, the Video Simplified Podcast YouTube channel, then you're watching it and you're like, yeah, but that looks great, fantastic. But if it was with a webcam, you ain't that worried. You got listening tools and stuff like that on YouTube now, and you can listen in the background. So no, no big deal, nothing's lost with that, as long as it's not like super distracting or whatever. Now, so I said the audio, the lighting, the lighting source is good, so even when I just natively recorded a video on my phone for TikTok video, cause I'm like, okay, I got my one camera set up for vertical video at my desk. And I'm like, do I wanna take that down? Yeah, I got the, the ZV-1 over there and I had the A6600 out, but I'm like, I wanted to use this camera for the A6600 as the example in this video clip that I was doing. So only gonna be 60 seconds. I'm not finna set up and we need to edit it. And I'm like, uh, no, 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 I don't have to. That's what I want. Best possible cases up here. The easiest route following ALV or the Alvis method. Again, like I said, I'll get into the other stuff in another time, maybe as we're getting close to the launch of the book and stuff like that. So I'm breaking down some of those concepts and the whatnot. But the first part of Alvis is ALV, audio, lighting, video. My audio was good because the first time I the, did the video, I had my phone in my hand, but because the Rodecaster can connect to my smartphone, I just plugged in my smartphone. Lighting, L. I had the lights on. I always can just use a simple command with, uh, I'm not gonna say the thing's name, but let's just say your digital assistants with technologies and whatnots. Okay, Lady A, we'll just say that. I can say, turn on such and such lights and the lights come on. And I can give a different command for the lights and certain ones go off and certain ones come on based on how I need to create content or where in the room I'm creating content and what I need to have done. Day like today, I just have to turn all the lights on. So no matter where I'm going, I'm good. Okay, the lights are all on. So even with the smartphone, it looks great. Some of my earlier videos in the same space with poor lighting, and not even set and having even invested in good light and not having that set up right, it still was a mess, still looked bad. So good lighting done well can save you a lot. So L is checked off, the lighting's checked off. Now my camera source, one thing I did that helped me tremendously, this, the little lens cloth that comes with some of anything from your glasses, a microfiber cloth that is not dirty. So microfiber cloths are good for cleaning your glasses and stuff, even without some kind of solution or spray or something because it absorbs the oil. Once you have a cloth, you've washed it or whatever, it's no longer good for lenses and glasses. Some a new clean or one that's no extra oils and even hand natural oils from your, your, your hands is an issue. Take that in consideration. So I swap out microfiber cloths as well. But these little lens cloths, or you can get, um, put a link in the description 
uh, in the show notes for my favorite lens cloths, not like a physical one, but like disposable one. Love them. Get your box of 200 of those. They'll last you for several months, if not a year. Now, if you wear glasses, it'll probably be half a year, something like that, a little bit less. <laughs> but you take a good lens cloth. The first thing I did before I did recording for the video, now I'm ready to move into video once I got everything set up. Again, audio's good because I'm in close proximity to the microphone on my phone, built-in phone. So it's not a way, it's not going to sound super echoey. So I'm close to the audio source built into the phone. Uh, the lighting is good. So that's already good to go. Now I'm into the video side. My primary thing, so it doesn't look like somebody smeared Vaseline over the camera, is clean off the lenses, the front and the rear facing one. The video looks great. Feel free to go to my, my TikTok uh, account. And for May 31st, take a look at the video that I just uploaded. That's a native one with the phone. You can clearly tell the difference. So taking that in consideration, like if I want to do simple videos, you pretty much got everything that you need already. Now take into consideration that you're wanting to uh, switch to a camera. Everything else can remain the same. Excuse me. Everything else can remain the same. But we're now switching, let's say, the camera source. We're not going to want to use the built-in audio at that point. So that means we also need to change the audio source. If you follow this format, the like I said, the Alvis is uh, A-L-V-A-S, Alvis, not I-S. If you follow the Alvis method, at least the first three, which I'm teaching you in this podcast, the A-L-V, the audio, the lighting, the video, in that order that I'm giving it to you in the right order, Audio is first. So if you upgrade in the camera, you make space in that budget for the audio too. So I used a simple shotgun microphone in my demonstration, but because audio takes a precedence over the video, I need to make sure that that's right. So I didn't include this clip in the clip because it's only 60 seconds. But what I did was what I did describe and show though, is that I reversed the microphone so that the speaking portion is facing me. I'm not talking into the butt of the microphone. I'm speaking into the actual speaking portion of the microphone. So it's reversed. Looks a little weird, but for someone that's recording from behind the camera and you need good audio, that's important. The part that's not in the video is me adjusting my audio levels to make sure that if I was going to record a clip, because it was all impromptu, uh, just because I was answering a question, so if I was going to do an audio clip on the actual camera, just to demonstrate what it would look like, and I'm like, mm, I'm not doing all that um, for this, not in this moment, then I wanted the audio levels to be good. So to truly test the audio, I don't say test one, two, three, check, check, check. When you hear that, that is only for somebody that is trying to make sure and verify the audio works. You don't talk and say, check, check, one, two, you know, unless you're rapping or something, maybe. However, when you're speaking, you have multiple variations in the voice inflection so that it makes sense. Because of this, um, I had a, uh, I always say statements. So I'm never going to do, like I said, to check one, two, three. What I will do, though, is I'll say something that's on my mind, on my mind maybe recount a poem, some phrases or something that I know or whatever the case is. Uh, at the time was a Missy Elliott rap. It was some lyrics from one of her songs from back in the day. So, <laughs> and that's enough sufficiently to test the audio. So audio lighting now setting up the video looks great. Anytime I'm getting ready to do something, I'm going through this same process every single time. I don't want to over add a bunch of stuff. Something that was new that was recently added to my setup was the Loop Deck Live. And we've done a few videos on the Loop Deck Live on the channel. But it has to make sense to workflow. The question I'm always asking is, how is this going to fit? How is this piece of gear now going to fit my setup? What efficiencies, because I always think in two, two terms, which is uh, not two terms, but two wavelengths, essentially, which is logic and efficiency. How can I logically make something work? Or what's the logical process to, to go about doing things so it makes sense. And then number two, how can I make it efficient? Even when I worked at the bank, um, that was my biggest thing. Does it make sense? 
And if not, how can I make it make sense? And then number two, how can I make it efficient? Because they always going to have a system or a way to do it. Now, how can I make it better? How can I make it more efficient and work more to my needs? So with the Loop Deck Live, adding that, how are you going to fit? What am I currently doing and what are you replacing or making more efficient? Now, how can I make it even more efficient? A simple system of the what you're using and the how you're doing to make sure you don't overbuy is just basically answering those questions. How am I actually going to use this? Like today, there are some pieces of uh, gear and equipment that you'll buy that might be that you'll use it later. You'll use it over time. It took me a long time to come to grips with the need and the use case for the Rodecaster Pro. But before we dive into that, when it comes to like adding in extra stuff past the audio, your lighting, and then the video, let's dive into this week's gear fix. This week's gear fix is brought to you by SpeakPipe. This is going to be what we use when you want to leave a voice message. So make sure you go to dana.link forward slash gear fix for this week if you're listening. If not, and you're clicking on the description, it will still send you over. Uh, we'll just link, link directly to where you can do this. Um, so go to dana.link forward slash message if you need to. I, I definitely want to hear from you. What's something that you bought, overbought, or wish maybe wish you never bought? <laughs> I have plenty of things that I've gone through. I love the video that I did again diving into stuff that I made mistakes, stuff I should have never done and what I should have done, how much money it could have saved me if I had known X or if I had done X. Maybe it's trusting my gut, sometimes listening to good wisdom and good advice. So I'm curious, what's something that you bought, maybe shouldn't have bought over like it was just extra. Either way, I want to hear from you. Go to dina.link forward slash gear fix for this week's gear fix because I want to hear from you. <laughs> so let's get back into it. So my thing is when it comes to adding in extra stuff, like the new Rodecaster Pro 2 came out recently, we had the new Canon R7 and R10s that just came out. Literally today, we just had the, what is it? The uh, Fuji had the X-H2S. I think it is or something like that. I think that's the right one. Um, that just came out today. There's a ton of stuff coming out all the time. And sometimes it's within like a certain pattern. Like most cameras may come out every two years. So if you just got the a7 III in let's say 2010, then in 2012, expect a new camera. Sometimes it's a little bit late, it's like 2013 or something like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's two and three years later, sometimes four. Sometimes they just discontinue, quietly discontinue a camera and you never hear about it again. Canon did that with their, um, a camera I wish that they would bring back the APS. It wasn't APS-C, it was APS-H. Look it up sometime, APS-H. It's a bigger sensor, it's bigger than APS-C, but it's not quite as big as full frame. It was a perfect in between. I think that was a huge miss that Canon should have brought back, especially on these newer uh, ones that just came out. Um, so I missed that. There was the 7D. Uh, I think it was like the original 7D camera that came out, the Canon 7D. Ugh, I wish they had brought that sensor back. That, that should be a norm, you know? But anyway, my rant is over. So when you start looking at extra stuff, like the Rodecaster, Rodecaster 2, Loop Deck Live, whatever the case is, are you like, again, yeah, you can just want it and it could be great. And it's fine to get the things that you want that's just gonna bring you true joy. But at the point to where you honestly, like I remember, I remember like it was yesterday, I was sitting in literally this very office, it wasn't as decorated. So thank you to my friend that came over and helped me with that initially. Okay, saving my life out here in these streets because I ain't, I ain't the one. I can decorate a bookshelf. That's as good as I can do for you. I can't help you. I can make decorate a table. Maybe barely. I can't, I can do a bookshelf. That's what I can do for you. <laughs> so literally sitting in this room and I'm looking at all the stuff that I had, the zoom, uh, H four. I had, uh, the Canon T five. I, I had 
uh, the ceremonic something or another thing. I had was looking into another recorder type thing um, by Zoom or somebody else. All this crap, all these cables. And I'm just like, I remember being so frustrated because I'm well past the day I wanted to record content. I'm trying to work in between feeling well and such. And I'm super frustrated because I can't record content. And furthermore, all this stuff is in my way for me to actually record content well. I'm annoyed as hell. And I remember thinking, oh, I had a mixer board, like a traditional mixer board and all of that. I'm like, man, none of this stuff individually was bad pieces of gear past the ceremonic thing, which I talked about in the video. But all this stuff, man, I had accessories for a smartphone. And I'm just like, all this stuff is cluttering up my mind. I'm so annoyed. I'm looking, I'm like, okay. Delete, remove everything. I took, unhooked everything. Because the way I had the stuff set up, the audio was separately going into the, the Zoom because the preamps were bad on the camera. And, and I'm like, man, this lapel microphone is so long. I got this big wide, a 50 foot cable. This room ain't even that daggone big. And so it's just like, it's everything's annoying me. Didn't matter if it was like working, quote unquote, but it just was annoying the hell out of me. And so I'm like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I saw for like $10 or something, the purple Panda lapel microphone. Cause I was using the Boya BYM1. Everybody loves that microphone on YouTube. I don't like it. I don't like the ones similar to it. I don't like them 50 foot cable because of my experience. If you have need of it, great, good for you. I don't like it. It takes a battery, don't care for it. Because I've had, ha I have had where the battery dies over time. The batteries last a long time. Or it's in the smartphone position or whichever position is the opposite. Like it, it can do smartphone and it could do for cameras. And it's like in the other position. And so finally got the video right. Finally hit done like, oh, I'm exhausted. Put the dag on SD card and computer, no audio. Just sitting me sitting there, mouthing a bunch of stuff. Nothing's, no, you hear no audio, zero audio. Cause the switch is in the wrong thing. Can these, can you set up a system, simple, simple checks and balances system to watch for that stuff? Sure. But why the hell? Why, 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 why? No, I'm not doing it. Hell no. That microphone has been in a drawer and stayed in a drawer ever since it's going into the, the DGB's, not the bees knees hall of fame. Okay. The buzzards hall of fame thing. Boy is a fine company. I ain't got no qualms with them for real. But it's just, it's going in the Buzzards Hall of Fame. Stuff that I don't like, messed me up. And it's like, again, it's nobody's fault. It's my own fault though. But it's a good lesson and a good reminder. Because I wind up putting that to the side, my audio. And I'm like, I'm sick of this. Put it in a drawer. I got the Pop Voice lapel microphone. Came with an adapter that I could plug directly into the camera. Did it make the, did it improve or make the audio preamps in the Canon T5i sound better? No, but it made my life a whole hell of a lot easier to just sit down and record a video. The cable was shorter and I didn't have to worry about anything extra. And if I did need a little bit of extra length, it came with an extension um, cable to extend things out. <sighs> cool. So the overall microphone is short, but if I need to extend it, I can, but I don't always have to have this 50 foot leash. Great. Audio's checked off. Lighting. I had invested in nothing really like some $8 clamp lights that you get at the hardware store. Some of this gutter stuff from maybe the early two thousands of YouTube or whatever. Let's just, let's just all collectively agree, throw that crap in the trash and leave it where it's at. Okay. Our grandfathers of YouTube, nobody's old enough to be a grandfather, but I'm just saying, you know, even at some point I probably, okay. Getting great on T status on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? It's just for like the platform ain't that old. It's a teenager you don't trust to leave at home to take the chicken out. 
Okay? You don't trust them to remember. That's how old YouTube is. That teenager that you said, come home, and you said, I told you to put the chicken out, and they didn't. Okay? I wasn't interested in the butt whoopings. I remember. Okay? Set a reminder or something. Soak that mother some water. Hey. Okay? Whoopings. Not even the threat of whoopings. The guarantee of whoopings made you a better kid. That's all I'm saying. Okay? <laughs> but... You look at YouTube and it's like, yeah, you could, you could use $8 clamp lights from hardware store. You could use that, but why, why, why? YouTube lighting, like regular video lighting is fantastic now and it's cheap. It's already cheap. We don't need to go cheaper. I had somebody leave a comment um, about like, I didn't even recommend any audio things my tip was in the short vertical video that I did was it was on audio. I was like, don't overly cheap out on your audio gear. When you know if what you need is $50, like, you know, that the perfect thing that's going to fit your needs is 50 bucks. Don't go looking for something that's $7. That's going to introduce more problems than it's worth. So I'm like, basically you heard what you wanted to hear. You heard it through your filter. That's okay, because I get it. You'd be frustrated, stuff be happening, or you see a bunch of YouTube tips like everything's all hunky-dory and something's wrong, either in your setup or your workflow or whatever. I get it. But I'm like, it's cool. That's not what I said. Here's what I actually said. The $7 microphone innately may not be bad, or if you only got 10 bucks and you need a microphone today, get the $7 daggone microphone. Cause if the $50 microphone mean you got to wait another month before you make videos, make them couple crappy videos. Ain't nobody going to see no way. And then upgrade to the $50 one when you can. But if you know for a fact that the $50 microphone is what you for sure need will solve all of your problems. Don't like stop playing around with the $7. Cause you spend more than that. You spend more than $50 on that door dash, or you definitely spend $50 in a month on DoorDash. So let's not pretend like people for real broke in that sense. When it comes to gear, there's an excess of wasted money in everybody's budget for most people, especially in America. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's an American based statement, especially in America, other countries for sure. But I don't know your story for America. Eh, we got a lot of excess McDonald's ain't on every corner for no reason. They ain't worried about paying their bills. They, they pay, you know what I'm saying? So, like when it comes to the basic things, it's just do what's right. So if you know, like I, I'm like, I messed up with the lighting cause I did get the $8, whatever hardware lights and the mugs just making all kind of noise, making the room hot. So I can't have the fan on cause that's gonna add more noise. And I'm like, man, like the fan is on right now. Fan been on for the last several videos I've been recording. Just because I like the extra coolness, I like, especially with a lot of gear and stuff running. Same thing you'll see in office spaces. Have the room cooler than you normally would because it keeps your equipment cool. So some people be talking about overheating. Now I'll make this exception in the wintertime. Gear got to handle what it got to handle during the wintertime because I'm not going to be cold. But I will make the room cooler in the summertime to account for the heat difference or whatever. But even in the wintertime, stuff is fine. So the fan is on right now. You can't hear the ceiling fan. If I did this back when I was first getting to you, you'd be hearing everything. You know what I'm saying? So my lighting was jacked up. I instead bought softbox lights, which I had for a long time. But I got the wrong kind. Not just not knowing any better. Uh, and maybe watching price too. Maybe it was a $20, $30 difference. Most of the time, the differences that you need for your gear is within $100 or less. Most of the time, it's like $40 to $50 difference between the thing that you actually need and what you're looking at buying, actually like checkout buying. So what I should have got was maybe $120. Bucks. I got a $60 lighting kit instead. So I'm like, that's and that was a stupid mistake that I ended up paying for by not being able to adjust my lights, constantly having to adjust. Oh, it's too much sun coming in because I didn't think to diffuse the windows. And so I'm like, the lighting varies just so significantly, significantly from video to video. 
hella frustrating. So I'm like, okay, I need to figure this out. And so I got, I remember I saw somebody say, you can use paper to diffuse the things. And I already had a diffusion thing. It was a soft box. And I'm like, okay, so I can't turn the lights down. Quick fix, $2 roll of white paper. And that worked. It worked very, very well. And so that saves me. But how long am I going in the in-between between problem and true solution? Years. Because, quote, unquote, it's all right. Or it's doing the job. Or that's good enough. Good enough if it's, is a statement that will frustrate the hell out of you when it's time to create content. I stopped playing the good enough game. And I'd encourage you to do the same. <laughs> so that the video thing I'll spend and look at a camera price. And if I couldn't, and if I not even couldn't, if I didn't have the money immediately readily available, I was already figuring it out in my mind. It was already sold in mine, in my mind. I just don't have it in my hands yet. Great faith for a new camera. Some cheap, like I said, microphone, $50 or $7, try that $7 thing out. They buy it. It'd be all right. No, no, it ain't. It's going to be a problem. And it always was. <laughs> so when you think about like overbuying the stuff, let's just get the basics squared away. And it baffles me because so, it's so many people, especially in my audience, my community, especially I get on these calls, I get on these live streams is, oh, it was a, a big eye opener um, in 2020 when and especially 2020 and throughout 2021 as we're going through the panini press and i'm doing the live call-in show on the youtube channel and i'm like show me what your setup is and everybody says the same thing and i don't judge anybody but it's like i'm trying to help you you know find a solution everybody's doing the same like oh i got this i got that and i got this and i got that and i got this and i got that like stop you're doing too much you confusing yourself unnecessarily i remember specifically a gentleman i was talking to he had a bunch of uh, audio stuff and all those videos all them live streams still on the channel he had a bunch of audio stuff and he's like man i got this because i heard that and then i saw on this channel i got that and it's just like chill not until the next episode but just like chill all the way <laughs> because you'll need all that you brought it's like when you need when you got a car, you have four tires that actively operate the car, standard car. Not all some of y'all with these big old SUVs, or whatever. Y'all mind your business. I'm just talking about sedan owners and similar. Four tires operate the car. You have one other spare in your car on your person, as it were. You don't have four other spare tires in your car. The equivalent of overbuying gear is that some of y'all have a four door sedan. You got the donut back up in the trunk or the regular real tire is for the spare in the trunk. Cool. Some of y'all go out again. Notice I said sedan owners four-door car you got hummer tires in your trunk you putting big wheel tires on the roof you also are buying tires for go-karts and mopeds and scooters and filling up the back seat you are so weighed down with excessive tires that all work as a tire, wrong vehicle application. You ain't riding a scooter, you don't need them scooter tires in there. You ain't riding your bike or have need of your bike or regularly ride your bike, you'll need all them 37,000 tires in your car. You ain't got no scooter, you don't own a scooter, you don't need no scooter tires. You ain't got no big truck, big wheel truck, take them off the roof. That's the equivalent of, oh, now your car is so weighted down, it can't even back up. It can't even get out of park. This is the equivalent of overbuying gear 
that causes you to underproduce. To go from the frustration and the hell of overbuying and underproducing, just do the very simple. What's your audio audio setup? And not just setup, system. What is your lighting system? And what is your video system? Everything else is extra. If it does not serve one of those three, it becomes extra. And I don't add extra until I definitively have for me, like I've, I've made sure that the video is great or I'm in the process of improving it, but this is what I'm working with right now. I started with my phone, I transitioned to the Logitech C920. And then I transitioned to a point and shoot camera. Then I transitioned to a DSLR camera. Then I transitioned to a mirrorless camera. And I just kept upgrading the mirrorless camera over a period of now, which will be six years. It'll be six years this year of just creating content from day one. So you don't have to have it all figured out today. It don't have to take six years. That's just my personal journey and where gear was and stuff at the time. Some of y'all can speed past all of that. Now you don't have to worry about all of that. Wanted to take extra time and just have a conversation around this because nobody else is having this conversation. And I wanted to talk about it because this is something that plagues a lot of people. And it seems like as long as we, the educators, the mentors, the ones y'all look up to when it comes to content creation, who you go to your guides we're allowing you to buy 37,011 lightsabers. Yoda let Luke use one lightsaber. Yoda had one lightsaber and was bad with it. Bad with it. Masterful. You know what I'm saying? Become a Luke Skywalker with your one lightsaber, stop trying to carry 15,011 of the same things. You're going to get chopped off at the knees. It's going to slow you down. And the only person that you'll be able to blame is yourself. That's where I'm going to leave it for this week's episode of the video simplified podcast. Make sure you call in, and leave a message. I'm very, very curious, very interested to hear what you have to say and your thoughts on this week's podcast episode because I know I know some of y'all are guilty and if you're listening to this and you feel that little tingle in your ear you're like she's talking to me I am you're correct <laughs> so as I love to end all my episodes the winds of life blows on us all but it's how you set your sails that guy's a little bit passion I'll see you on the next episode of the video simplified podcast take care love this conversation then you will love our video simplified community go to video simplified.live if you want to join into this wonderful community where we have our bi-weekly live streams where we're diving into titles and tactics and things surrounding youtube and content creation 